a deep sea vent, one of the most remote places in the ocean. Crushing water pressures, pitch black, with temperatures ranging up to 867 degrees Fahrenheit. If you happen to be on the bottom of the Indian Ocean, you might be surprised to come across one unique inhabitant, a snail with iron armor. In this podcast, we'll tell you what this snail has to do with lithium-ion batteries. The scaly foot gastropod comes from phylum mollusca and class gastropoda and are found in the Indian Ocean. These gastropods live in hydrothermal vent fields at the depth of 2,400 to 2,900 meters. To withstand these conditions, the scaly foot gastropod uses iron as protection. They are also the only animal that has a skeleton made of iron sulfide. Scientists are interested in understanding the biomineralization pathway that occurs when the scaly foot gastropod is making these iron sulfide nanoparticles. Understanding this pathway can apply to industrial settings for producing metal nanoparticles that are a source of energy in batteries. The amount of iron sulfide in scaly foot gastropods differs by environment. Scaly foot gastropods living in Kaare vent fields have significantly higher iron content than scaly foot gastropods living in solitaire vent fields. This leads to increased iron accumulation and the distinctive armor in the black scaly foot snail. For this study, which was conducted by researchers from Japan, scaly foot gastropods were collected using deep sea submersible vehicles equipped with slurp guns. The name of the device being fairly intuitive, as you can see it in action here, slurping up the sea cucumber. The snail samples were then preserved using ethanol or immediate freezing at negative 80 degrees Celsius. The researchers had three possible hypotheses proposed to explain the presence of iron sulfide nanoparticles in the gastropod. These hypotheses were that the nanoparticles had formed abiotically and diffused into the snails, that sulfur oxidizing bacteria symbionts provided the nanoparticles, or that the snail itself controlled the biomineralization of the particles. The first experiments performed were to identify whether the snails acquire nanoparticles abiotically or not. Isotopic analysis of the ratio of two forms of sulfur, heavy S34 and light S32, were performed on the snails. The main findings of this analysis was that the ratio of the heavy isotope was significantly lower in the scales compared to values seen in other hydrothermal vent inhabitants. This low ratio can be attributed to preferential accumulation of the lighter isotope through redox reactions, implying the process of biomineralization in the snail. The next step was microscopic analysis of the scales. Knowing that biomineralization was occurring within either the scales or the secreting epithelium, researchers then turned to address the source of iron and sulfur and reveal who is responsible for the biomineralization. Microscopic analysis revealed three distinct layers of the scales and it categorized by separate arrangements and forms of particles. In the inner layer, researchers found iron sulfide nanoparticles with particle growth proportional to scale growth. The inner layer was also found to have sulfur-rich domains, not seen in similar vent species, indicating the scaly foot enriches the scale with sulfur itself. Newly secreted scales were found to contain sulfur but lack iron, while the secreting epithelium had reduced sulfur and trace iron. These findings indicate that the snail supplies sulfur from the underlying epithelium to the scales, however, also indicates that the iron is not obtained from the snail. In order to determine if iron is obtained from the surrounding environment, researchers utilized the white scaly foot samples collected. Researchers incubated white scales in the Chiari vent field for 13 days and then performed microscopic analysis to determine iron diffusion. The cross section of the scales showed that iron did in fact diffuse about six micrometers into the scale and iron sulfide nanoparticles were found within the inner layer. With scientists having knowledge of these snails' ability to produce iron sulfide nanoparticles, they would ultimately be able to use this to their advantage. As of right now, there are various uses for these minerals and nanoparticles, such as an MRI machinery as contrast agents and an up-and-coming use within lithium-sodium batteries. As of right now, in order to produce these nanoparticles, it requires very high temperatures. However, the scaly foot snail is able to produce these same particles at much lower temperatures. Current industrial production of these nanoparticles is a difficult process, so using biomimicry of the natural occurring process could be a faster and more environmentally friendly alternative.
In conclusion, scaly foot snails biologically control the mineralization of iron sulfide by constructing channel-like sulfur-enriched columns in their scales that allows a continuous supply of sulfur that then combines with iron ions from the seawater and are oxidized to produce pyrite and graygite. Simply mixing iron atoms and hydrogen sulfide does not form iron disulfide, which is the form needed in producing pyrite and graygite, indicating that there may be a need for a deep-sea biological environment to produce these particles at a lower cost. Our scaly foot snails are not the only organism that are currently being studied in to aid in development of industrial resources. Hexactinellid glass sponges, like the one presented in lab, are being studied to understand if their spicules have fiber optical characteristics similar to those of commercial telecommunication fibers. Overall, we have a lot to learn from these deep sea organisms and we are excited to see where future research leads.